I'm sitting there going, well, why, why waste a patch cord coming from the output of this to this? So I put in a switch to connect them internally. So there's, there's your disco stuff right there. <laughs> and, uh, and so this thing just kind of evolved while I was designing it out. Uh, and and it's, it's pretty handy, actually. Um, this clock out right here is a 35 millisecond pulse. Coming out of here, it's inverted. So it, it's a negative going in. Uh, 35 millisecond pulse and so when you speed this thing up and slow it down the pulse width of pulse width of your clock remains the same it's uh, whatever the long portion is that, that changes and of course these are going to be essentially square waves out because they're, they're divided by 2 divided by 4 so <laughs> they're going to end up being 50 percent duty cycles but while I was doing that, I'm sitting there going, well, gee, that's great. Well, you know, they could sit here all day and rock out on these switches, you know, and stop the thing and start it and all that. And I'm going, you know, that's really hard on a mechanical switch. So I put a push-button pause on there. <laughs> and since I still had a still had a section of an op-amp sitting there, if somebody's going to be doing ambient-style stuff, uh, and I still had a few holes left in the panel. I figured, what the hell, let's use them. Uh, uh, the oscillators are really great, but they've got maybe two, three octaves. You can tune them if you don't have any sort of CV input. But if you really want to get up in the higher registers, it's kind of out of the question, unless you have some sort of fixed voltage that you can stick in there. So I came up with a little 0 to 6 volt DC output right here that you can <laughs> drive the oscillators with or open up your filter or put it into the VCA or whatever you want to do so you can have a fixed output. So that's... Uh, that's called Utility 1.